This is the next video in our series regarding information literacy. One great way to access a large amount of information at once is a database. And so I'm using the example here of Lincoln College of New England, and there are 92 databases available. Uh, you don't see all of those in a single list because many of them are nested in amongst each other. But databases, again, are a great way of accessing books and ebooks and academic journal articles and periodicals and all sorts of stuff at once. And so you can put in a couple of keywords or search terms and you can modify date ranges and things like that and you can get what you need pretty quickly. And for those of us that were researching before the digital age, uh, these things are just pretty incredible. So um, databases can be very specific collections of items, for example, just ebooks, or they might be multi-purpose sites that have just about everything that you can think of. And so the things that you have to know about databases are they're really, really powerful and they can be very complex. So you need to sort of understand how the searching algorithms and the, the listing algorithms work so that you can make best use of your search terms. You also know that you have to have your vocabulary down. And so you might have to access a simpler source like a printed book, a monograph, to figure out what the vocabulary is regarding a specific issue. Otherwise, your searching is not going to be particularly effective at all. Um, so a couple of examples of specialized databases. EBSCO has a scientific and medical art image base, which provides pictures and videos and some really fantastic diagrams of medical and health related topics. So for example, if you're taking some kind of um, anatomy related science class like medical terminology or anatomy and physiology, and you're doing a presentation or you're even just trying to understand uh, a particular body process or system, instead of searching for low quality Google images, you can search within a database like this and find some amazing, amazing sources that would be appropriate for what you're doing. Um, the Cochrane Library by Wiley is also another type of highly specialized source. There's a lot of different components to that library. Um, uh, the one that um, is available at Lincoln College uh, actually has to do with quality reviews and trials used in allied health and in the dental fields. There are really big uh, players in the database industry. So EBSCO's Academic Search Premier and ProQuest, ProQuest Central are databases that pull a lot of different separate databases together in a lot of different disciplines and allow you to search all of them at once. And so those are pretty popular databases that you see at most institutions. And finally, some institutions will allow you to search just about everything at once, and that's called the Discovery Service. So Lincoln College of New England has the EBSCO Discovery Service. And so from one search box, you can search about 95% of the collection, including physical items. There are some databases that don't interface with these Discovery Services, and so therefore are excluded. But if you are um, an undergraduate and you're just trying to do some basic research, this is a fantastic way to see everything that a library has at once. Your best resource for searching and for going through the information literacy process on a particular topic, however, is a librarian. So um, even if you're just having trouble conceptualizing what it is that you're trying to do, you need to go and see a librarian and they can help you think about it. If you're stuck while researching and you just can't find the information that you need or you feel like you're going in circles, or you're just not going about it the right way, then again, a librarian is a person with a master's degree and helping you find things and stuff. And you, you should consult them as soon as possible. And so as you're working through information processing, you should know that there's kind of an information pyramid and there's four levels. At the lowest level, which is where most of the data is, or most of the information is in general, it's just raw bits and bytes. It's just little components of information that have really no meaning unless you process it through a system. At the next stage, the information stage, the data is actually structured. There is some content to it. So you know that 
these are um, heights or weights of individuals in, on a particular sports team. Knowledge means that you have the content in the context to actually do something with the information. So you need these heights and weights about a college sports team because you're a pro scout and you're trying to decide if someone would be right for your team and that you might pick them up through the draft. And then finally, at the top level, you have wisdom. And that is the pure distilled guiding principle extracted from knowledge. And that means you really you can make use of your information, but you always have you have the wisdom to know what really to do with it. So I'm only going to use this information for positive things or negative things. Am I going to change society positively or change somebody's life, or am I going to use it to take advantage of somebody? And that's where wisdom really comes into play.